Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a really cool number theory problem. We want to find all integers n such that n plus 9 and n squared plus 27 are both cubes. Okay, if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so as I mentioned in the title of this video, the clue is in the thumbnail. We're going to be using Fermat's last theorem to solve this problem. Now, Fermat's last theorem was a problem that went unsolved for over 350 years, and it was proved relatively recently uh, by Andrew Wiles. This is what the theorem is, if you haven't heard of it. So if we have a positive integer m, which is at least 3, then there are no integer solutions where x, y, z are positive integers to this equation here. x to the power of m plus y to the power of m equals z to the power of m. Now, I'm not going to prove this theorem in this video, but I've actually proved it in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Anyway, how can we use Fermat's last theorem to help us solve our problem? So we want n plus 9 to be a cube number, so let's call it a cubed. And we also want n squared plus 27 to be a cube number, so let's call that b cubed. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just multiply these two numbers together. So if I do that, I get a cubed b cubed, which is obviously the same thing as a b cubed. But then if I write this as n plus 9 times n squared plus 27, and just expand the brackets, this n squared times n is n cubed. This n squared times 9 is 9n squared. This n times 27 is 27n, and then 9 times 27 is 243. And now I look at the first three terms here, and this looks awfully similar to what I get if I do n plus 3 cubed. Because n plus 3 cubed is just n cubed plus 9n squared plus 27n plus 3 cubed, which is 27. So it's almost the same as n plus 3 cubed, but I've got 243 minus 27 added on, and this is just 316. But this is not an issue, because then I can write that a cubed times b cubed, in other words, a b cubed, is just n plus 3 cubed plus 316, or oh, not 316, 216, sorry. And 216 is precisely 6 cubed. So we have a b cubed equals n plus 3 cubed plus 6 cubed. But this is an issue because this appears to contradict Fermat's last theorem. Because if we just have m being equal to 3, this says that we can't add up two cube numbers and get another cube. But before we arrive at a conclusion and say that our, that's our problem solved, we have to be a bit careful. Because Fermat's last theorem says that there's no positive integer solutions to this equation here. But that doesn't mean that we can't have zero. So if obviously if x equals zero and we have y to the m equals z to them, there's definitely a solution to that, right? Just having y being equal to z. So we need to ensure that none of these guys are zero. And now you might ask yourself, well, what about if they're negative? Thankfully, if some of these, you know, if n was a negative number, if it was less than minus three, this term here would be negative. That's not the end of the world because then I could just bring it onto this side and make it positive. So I can always rearrange this equation if need be. So it's a positive number cubed plus uh, or a non-negative number cubed plus another non-negative number cubed equals a non-negative number cubed. So I just need to make sure that all of these terms here aren't zero. So six definitely isn't zero. What about n plus three? Could that be zero? Well, if that is zero, then that means that n equals minus three. But thankfully, we don't need to worry about this because if n equals minus three, if we just look at this, that means that minus 3 plus 9, which is 6, should be a cube number, and that's definitely not true. So n can't be minus 3 anyway, because we need n plus 9 to be a cube number. Uh, and what about if ab uh, is 0? Well, remember, ab is just, well, the cube root of n plus 9 and the cube root of n squared plus 27. So we need that either a or b is 0. So if b is 0, that means n squared plus 27 is 0, and that's definitely not possible. Uh, because n squared has to be at least 0, and therefore n squared plus 27 is at least 27. Uh, how about n plus 9? Can that be 0? And again, the answer is no, because if that was 0, we'd have n equals minus 9, and then that means that this number here, n squared plus 27, would be 81 plus 27, and that is 108, and 108 is definitely not a cube number. And so that means that there are no solutions to our problem. In other words, there are no values n, such that n plus 9 
and n squared plus 27 is a cube number by Fermat's last theorem. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this solution video. I think it's a really cool use uh, application of Fermat's last theorem. Lots and lots of people say that, you know, Fermat's last theorem has no real world applications. But here we see, uh, you know, an everyday example of a problem which you can use in your everyday life where you can apply Fermat's last theorem. Um, anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you are new to the channel and you have enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing and also giving this video a thumbs up as well. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, let me know what other videos you'd like to see me make. And uh, apart from that, I'm going to stop waffling. I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.